As someone who has spent my entire life on the organized political left, speaking in favor of socialism and opposing imperialism, I want you and other Trump supporters to know that I don't hate you. I don't think that you are a terrorist. In fact, I think that the way Trump supporters are being portrayed in American media right now is deeply problematic. It is completely unfair. And there is not any clear-headed understanding of what is going on in this country right now and what has motivated so many people to be filled with anger. Now, I certainly don't condone what happened on Capitol Hill last Wednesday, but I understand why people are angry and would want to take such actions. Look at the country right now. Amid this pandemic, the working families have been left behind. Our politicians get up and announce more lockdowns and more restrictions with no regard for the fact that America's working families are struggling. With the economy shut down, so much of the aid money that was meant to go to small business owners was gobbled up through loopholes by Amazon and Walmart. Working families have been left behind while big monopolies and corporations have reaped the benefits. And it didn't just start with the pandemic. Good paying jobs have been eliminated. Roads are crumbling. This whole country and the people of this country have been abandoned by an elite, a ruling class that seems far more interested in its own profits around the world than taking care of the working people of this country. The cancel culture atmosphere on the left that says all Trump supporters are Nazis or terrorists or insane or deranged is very, very unsettling and disturbing to me. Furthermore, the proposals coming from Democrats and some Republicans right now are also deeply disturbing. Branding protesters and activists as terrorists is a dangerous, dangerous move on the part of our government to take but it fits in with a whole pattern of our civil liberties being stripped away and a huge police state being imposed by a government that seems to respond to the growing unrest among the population, not by listening to the people, but rather by cracking down on them. And while I don't agree with many of the things and most of the things that Ashley Babbitt said, and while I certainly don't condone the actions she engaged in, there is no doubt in my mind that Ashley Babbitt did not deserve to die. The police could have responded to her behavior in a way that did not result in killing her. Her life did not need to be snuffed out in response to whatever she did or is alleged to have done. And the fact that law enforcement would take a woman's life in this situation, kill her, is something that is deeply upsetting. Ashley Babbitt should still be alive, as should George Floyd, as should Michael Brown, as should Oscar Grant, as should Sean Bell. Law enforcement in the United States, the police state apparatus is completely out of control and it is a threat to all Americans to see our law enforcement agencies, both local and federal, acting so out of control with such extreme disregard for the lives of the people. It is my concern about how out of control law enforcement is and how much our rights are being stripped away that makes me believe Kamala Harris, our incoming vice president, is one of the most dangerous politicians in American history. Kamala Harris may claim to be a supporter of Black Lives Matter and an advocate for the rights of people against police brutality, but her record as a prosecutor in California is something that should disturb any moral person. She tried to keep an innocent man on death row and prevent DNA evidence from being admitted. She has a whole record of not only destroying the lives of innocent working people, but taking gleeful pleasure in it. And it's because of this that I wrote an entire book exposing Kamala Harris's record as a cruel, heartless, sadistic, and narcissistic person who definitely does not have the interests of America's working families at heart. And while I absolutely condemn 
the way you have been demonized, the way you are being portrayed, the way you have been harassed, the threats of brutal police state repression coming down on you, I must point out to you what is obvious. Donald Trump betrayed you. Donald Trump left you out to dry. Donald Trump sent you into a death trap. What many politicians and mainstream media voices don't seem to understand is that behind the actions that took place on Capitol Hill last Wednesday, there was a real desperation. Children are hungry. Roads are unpaved. Whole neighborhoods and communities are being filled up with empty, foreclosed homes. At this point, lives are being destroyed by drug addiction. So much of America is desperate for a solution, desperate to make our leaders understand what we are going through, desperate to force the government to stop ignoring the cries of the people, a desire to get out of these horrendous conditions. It is that desperation that drives so much of what Trump supporters have said and done over the past four years. And while I consider myself to be a person of the left, I understand why you are off-put by a lot of the rhetoric coming out of left-wing voices. You see the left as a mob of people who favor destruction, who attack you on a personal level, who attack the country, who attack the traditional family, who attack Christianity, and attack things that are deeply sacred and important to you. You see the left as a group of people that say there is no truth and there's nothing to believe in. You see the left as a group of people that want to further destroy your communities and destroy the things that are important to you. Well, I'm here to tell you, I don't want to see the United States destroyed. I don't want to see this country broken apart. I don't want to see life for working Americans get worse. I am not a socialist because I want to destroy America. I am a socialist because I want to save America. I don't agree with Donald Trump's slogan, Make America Great Again, but I also don't think it's fair the way a lot of left-wing voices characterize the history of the United States. Yes, the United States was founded on slavery and the genocide of Native Americans, but at the time slavery went on, there were also many abolitionists and many heroic slave revolts there were individuals like Nat Turner and John Brown who gave their lives to heroically fight against slavery. Abraham Lincoln came to office doing battle with the slave owners and millions of Americans joined arm in arm to defeat the brutal system of slavery. Harriet Tubman became the first woman to lead US soldiers into battle. How did these good paying jobs that once existed get to be jobs with decent benefits? Why is it that workers in the steel mills and the auto plants once made decent wages where they could afford a, a decent life in America's suburbs? That was due to the efforts and struggles of organized labor, the Flint sit-down strike, the strikes of 1934, the efforts of the Wobblies, and the efforts of the Teamsters, and the efforts of so many hardworking dedicated Americans who loved their country, loved their community, and loved their families enough to stand up to big corporations and fight for decent wages is what made America once what it was. It is not fair to describe the whole history of the United States as nothing but cruelty and genocide and racism. There is a whole other side to the American people. So many Americans go through life now not knowing who they are not knowing where they are going, and not knowing what their life even means. A malaise of hopelessness has come over the country. The fact that people would look to Donald Trump or some other leader to try to break out of that hopelessness, to try to save the country from the grip of pessimism and destructiveness that has come over it, it's something very understandable. I certainly don't condone what happened on Capitol Hill last Wednesday. However, in an age where so many people are told that there is nothing worth fighting for, there is nothing worth dying for, there is no truth and there is no hope for the future, to see people who are so dedicated and loyal to their candidate 
and their president, they would go out and take such great risks, reassures me that something good can happen in the future of this country. We have some pretty big disagreements between us. I don't think that immigrant workers are our enemies. Furthermore, I think that the ICE raids and the repression of the immigrant communities have only made disgusting terrorist gangs like MS-13 more powerful. By driving immigrant workers into the shadows, by making immigrant families afraid to call the police, this has only emboldened the poisonous, dangerous elements that have emerged and the underground economy in which workers, both documented and undocumented, are ruthlessly exploited. One of the founding principles of this country is religious freedom and freedom of conscience. It means that you have the right to pray to whichever God you want and to live your life according to your own principles. This applies to Protestants, to Catholics, to Mormons, to Jews, but also to Muslims, and also to lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people. Religion and personal lifestyles are a matter of civil liberties. Everyone should be free to live their life according to their own principles. And just like Donald Trump led you into a death trap and betrayed you on Wednesday, sending you to the Capitol and then turning his back on you when facing scorn over it in the national media, our entire ruling class, Democrats and Republicans, are now leading us into a death trap called World War III. By escalating tensions with Russia and China, by escalating threats against Venezuela, Iran, Cuba, and other countries around the world, they are leading us into a situation where our whole country could be destroyed and the whole planet could be destroyed. Nuclear war is not a joke and World War III will be an epic disaster. Our enemies aren't in China, they're not in Russia, they're not in Iran, they're not in Venezuela. Our enemies are on Wall Street. They are billionaires and bankers, huge multinational corporations that have no loyalty to this country, no loyalty to God, no loyalty to anything but their own profits. I urge you to deeply reconsider and investigate what Donald Trump and others have told you about communism. Communism is not an ideology that seeks to enslave people. Communism is not an ideology that seeks to impoverish people. The teachings of Karl Marx and Frederick Engels, as put into practice by Lenin, by Mao in China, by Stalin, by Ho Chi Minh, by the people of Cuba and of Nicaragua, by Gaddafi in Libya, by the Baathist Arab Socialist movements of the Middle East, by the Bolivarian Socialists of Latin America, by the leaders of China with socialism with Chinese characteristics. These teachings are about eradicating scarcity and eliminating poverty. Socialism is a movement dedicated to having all society take control of the major centers of economic power, having the banks, factories, and major industries organized to serve the people and not simply the profits of the big multinational corporations and bankers who own them. It is about putting the people first and eliminating the rule of profits. And the goal of socialism is not to have a total government domination of the population. It's not to build an authoritarian police state. It is the opposite. The goal of socialism is to build a society that is so prosperous and so abundant in which there is so much wealth and prosperity that the very need for all government can fade away, in which there can be so much material abundance that people can live on the basis from each according to his own ability to each according to his needs. The goal is a world with so much prosperity that we can have a level of freedom far beyond anything ever experienced before in human history. Socialism is a movement about making everyone wealthy by eliminating a system where technology impoverishes people. In a rational society, self-driving cars would be a good thing. But under our system of capitalism, where people can only live so long as they sell their labor power to a boss, self-driving cars would result in mass unemployment and the impoverishment of millions of truck drivers and their families. 
In systems of the past, people were hungry because there wasn't enough food. But in our system, people go hungry because there is too much food. In our system, people are cold in the winter, not because there isn't enough heat and gas, but because there is too much heat and gas. People become homeless, not because there's not enough housing, but because there is too much housing. Capitalism is a deeply irrational system. The more efficient technology becomes, the more wealth is produced, the poorer people get. And this is a system that ultimately needs to be abolished and replaced with something much more rational in which the needs of the people can be met and the economy can function on the basis of continued growth, not the irrational boom-bust cycle of the market. Your community and your family are far too important to be left under the care of an invisible hand, the magic of the market that might just leave you behind or lead you to poverty and destitution. We need a government of action that will make sure Americans are taken care of and organize the economy to serve the people, not the profits of a wealthy few. We need a new America for working families. We need a whole new country where people are treated with kindness and respect and allowed to live up to their full potential by society. That's what we desperately need. And I hope that despite our disagreements, those of you in the Trump movement or previously in the Trump movement will listen to what I have to say and engage with me as we walk down a new road.